thank you so much for your company this morning. Black Boots, New Zealand Rugby Legends is renowned rugby writer Phil Gifford's latest book, packed with over 150 photographs from a classic era of New Zealand rugby. It's a fascinating insight into the early days of our national sport. And it is really great to have you back on the cafe, Phil. Yeah, it's Welcome. lovely to be. Lovely to see you both. We had you here with your last book too, about talking about you Michelle, did. didn't you? <laughs> you didn't so, um, so you turned this one up pretty yeah. quick. Well done. Uh, what I like about it, I mean, you're, you've got a, had a really special interest in rugby. Is this true? Since 1977, you've worked at every test played in New Zealand and you've covered every Rugby World Cup? Yeah, that, both those every statements test. are true. Yeah, so no, it's not just sort of work bizarre. for you then, it must be a real no. passion as well. Oh, totally, you know. And I mean, one of the things where I've been blessed really is that I grew up as a kid in Waihi, nuts on rugby, right? And then almost, well, not by accident exactly, but I, I never had any grand schemes. But if you told me that I would have the working life that I've had when I was 16 or 17, I would have said, well, that's wonderful, and I'm also going to win lotto, and I'm <laughs> going to have a number one hit record sort of thing. But I've, I've been able to make what my passion is, I've been able to make a living from it. Mm -hmm. And part of the process, especially during this era that the book covers, which is sort of late 50s through to the very early 1980s, is that in the process I've got to know a lot of the people and hear a lot of the stories because this look let's be honest this is basically a photographic book there's 30,000 words in it that, that I wrote but what makes it work I think are these amazing black and white photographs taken by great photographs mostly by Barry Durant um, also the estate of the late Maury Hill from the 1960s allowed us to use some of his wonderful photographs as well so there's just like, photographs of iconic players and some iconic shots mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. yeah we're just seeing them up there on screen at the moment and as you say uh, iconic players and iconic moments and mm. moments that people who were there or even have seen the images will remember forever it might have been the front page of a paper at some yeah. point but do you remember your first encounter with an all black yeah absolutely I uh, must have been about eight or nine years old my father and mother had a farm outside Morrinsville and we went into Campbell Park in Morrinsville and as it was back in those days you, you you treasured some connection with the All Blacks. You know, if your cousin lived next door to somebody who knew an All Black, that was gold, you know. I still think that's probably quite yeah. a big deal. But yeah. I, I, I would imagine so. And, and, and I met the great Don D.B. Clark, the you know, fullback who was kind of basically my idol at the time. And I remember two things about him. One was how big his hands were. But then I had a nine-year-old hands, and my hands aren't very big now. I've got Donald Trump hands. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, I met Don. And now that's what we're going to look at. So anyway, continue. I know, yeah. yeah. I met Don Clark, and, and he shook my hand. And the other thing I remember is that I was staring basically at his knees because he was a big man, you know. And he had these bandages because I found out later on in life that he had huge problems with the cartilages in his knees. And he had these massive bandages which were caked in mud, which for some reason as a nine-year-old made a hell of an impression on me. Mm. And then, I mean, later on, I mean, the, some of the most treasured parts of my life have been the fact that there are people like, for example, that I got to know and that I would consider a friend, like Colin Meads. Oh. I mean, that astonishes me. I just want to bring up this photo that I just found of him before, which I absolutely love. It's not a rugby one. Yeah, with this the one dog. Here, with his dog. Isn't that just gorgeous? There yeah. is, the, the, it's that, and the one that struck me actually is another one of Colin Meads, and I think it's his farewell yes. game. Yes. Um, uh, was it Athletic Park or something like that? Is that, that one I, on the back cover? I know, I just. Maybe. He's, but what struck me no. is, no. what you know, they, this yeah. donates so much product in that. His boots look absolutely shot. Yeah. They've <laughs> really played games of rugby. I mean, look, one of the things that, that has changed so much, because it's almost a societal thing with this book, I think, too, which I discovered the more I worked on the captions, the, the more I realised it is how much our New Zealand society has changed, as well as rugby. Because rugby, particularly back then, was a huge part of our society, much bigger part than it was now, to be honest. And the thing is that the All Blacks then, as I've said, they, they were us. Mm. They were the guy that you went into. I'll, I'll tell you, a, a guy, I've got a couple of pictures of the fabulous Walker Nathan. He's a wonderful rugby player and a beautiful man. Now, Walker Nathan, when he was a young man, was a boner at the freezing works in Westfield. In 1960, there was a midweek game between Auckland and Canterbury for the Ranfilly Shield, and Walker Nathan, Nathan scored the winning try that saved the Shield. At that moment, 45,000 people at the park, the rest of them listening on radio, no TV. He was probably the most popular man in Auckland. Mm. So, after that game, he has his shower, he goes to the aftermatch function. At 7 o'clock the next morning, he's on a bus with his little bag full of his boning knives, going to Westfield to work in the freezing works for an eight-hour day. Wow. And that's the difference. They came, they were us because they came, they sprung from our little towns and mm. our big cities, and we worked alongside them, and in the weekend, they became legends. Total era, different era. Is that why you chose this time to do it, like the, this from the 50s to the 80s? Well, no, look, to be honest, it was a sort of a happy coincidence. These photographs and this photographic collection began actually as posters 
during first of all during the 2011 Rugby World Cup and then during last year's Lions Tour and they were in places uh, they were around the red zone in Christchurch, they were around to Papa and Wellington. It's a great picture on screen right now. It? it was uh, of them playing in the snow with the um, with the guards. Oh the, yes, at Ballymena in Northern Ireland, that's right, yeah, because they, they were there during the Troubles and, and uh, as they used to euphemistically call it. So yeah, they, they so, so first of all it, there were these posters and then the publishers suggested that it would be a good idea. A guy called Jerry Morris in Wellington had the original concept for the posters mm. and then the publishers said well what about a book and it was I had most of the captions already, but I went and revisited all of them because some of them I extended, mm. some of them needed to be updated and stuff like that. And what I really tried to do with the captions, because the photographs deserved... I'm delighted with the quality of the production of the book. I had nothing to do with that, so I'm not bragging saying that. That's the publishers did that. I just think that these photographs are so good, they deserve good quality paper and a good quality production. And then with the captions, I really tried to make them very personalised and... Can I tell you one, my favourite story from the captains? Please. Got yeah. There's a photograph somewhere near the front, I think, Mel, of Dave Loveridge in 1983 running the ball around the side of the scrum against the Lions at, 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 at Athletic Park. Now, yeah. Dave Loveridge is playing for Taranaki, and his coach at the time was a guy called JJ Stewart, a very funny bloke, who told me the story. So in those days, the Taranaki provincial team trained on a Sunday morning, and Dave Loveridge had played club rugby the day before. That's, that's the one. It. Had played, club, had played club rugby, that's Dave Loveridge there, had played club rugby the day before he and then obviously it had quite a, quite a big night at the yeah. rugby club. So he's a bit seedy on the Sunday morning and he's got his five-year-old son with him. And JJ Stewart says to Dave's son, ah, oh, your daddy doesn't look very well, mate. Uh, what's happening? And the little boy says, no, he's not very well, Mr Stewart. He leaned over this morning and all his porridge fell out. <laughs> <laughs> I love so, it. But, and and, and just, just one of the things that, that's, that, that why I enjoyed working on this book so much is every story virtually that I've ever heard mm. at an after-match function, at speeches at rugby clubs I've given, chatting with All Blacks for stories, I've been able to use a whole bunch of stories. I don't know where else you would use them, mm. you know, and I've been able to use them in this book with all these amazing guys and, and all, yeah, these, these astonishing photographs, which really I found, I found the photographs quite inspirational. Yeah. It was a pleasure to work on it. It never felt like work. But as you say, they are personal, you know, captions that go with them, mm. and I think it makes it accessible for people who are perhaps not quite the rugby nuts. Yeah, I hope um, so. It's not contrived, you know. I just flicked through, and it just it felt like you were you were there telling us a story. Was yeah, I mean that's that, thank you because because that's the absolute aim of it. Because if you're a fan and you're an enthusiast, which I am, and you've been lucky enough to to have access that a lot of other fans and enthusiasts haven't had, and I've been lucky enough to have then to me what, what I'd like the feel of the thing to be is exactly that. That imagine if we had this table covered in photographs and we sat down and I said, oh, have a look at this photograph. Yeah. This is Murray Mixted and, and the caption to that one we just flicked past of yeah. Murray Mixted. Uh, Eric Watson, <laughs> the coach told me that he once said, the coach of the All Blacks once said, he said to Murray, well, Murray, uh, what about if I get a ball for you and then maybe the rest of the guys can have a go? <laughs> because, <laughs> because Murray covered all facets of the game, you know. So, yeah, there you go. I love it. Uh, Phil Gifford's book, Black Boots, New Zealand Rugby Legends, is on sale right now. I could talk for a lot longer about it. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Good Chrissy Chrissy. Absolutely the perfect Christmas gift.